Well, as the holidays are getting closer and your kids are making their wish list, many of them may be asking for a phone. And we know how hard it is because they're telling you all the other kids have them. So more and more, it's the parents who want their kids to have phones so they have a way to stay in touch. But if you're conflicted about it, there are other alternatives to consider. Yes, Denver 7's Nicole Brady is going 360 to help you, the parent, decide the best way to stay connected. It's the morning ritual for parents. A quick kiss. Have a good day. Then we send the kids off into an unpredictable world. But these days, they can let you know they got there. See, she'll say, I'm at school, love you. A recent study by Common Sense Media found 53% of kids have a smartphone by age 11, 69% by age 12. Parents are conflicted. I would like to hold out as long as I can, but I don't, I don't want her to feel like I don't trust her. It is so much harder than when we were kids, and this was the only way to contact anyone. So we're going to try to make it a little easier, going 360 on some alternatives to springing for a smartphone. On the line, we have a psychology professor, a Denver teacher, and parents who are taking different approaches to keep in touch with their kids. They kept telling me, Mommy, I wish I could talk to you. I wish I could tell you something happened today. Gina Luber didn't think her second and fifth grader were old enough for phones, so instead they wear the Gizmo Gadget, one of many smartwatches on the market. These watches have call and text on them. They also have GPS tracking, so peace of mind for parents, but the kids can only call and text certain people. They can get a hold of my parents, and they can get a hold of my sister. And I think that's that sense of security for me and also for them, knowing that there is a way that you can talk to me. Hillary Saunders also wanted a way to stay in touch without giving her fifth grade daughter a phone. I don't think that's really necessary for young kids to have access to all the time. So she went with a really low tech option. A walkie talkie. I'm going to be walking home with Leah. It's just a two way communication device for us to talk to each other quickly and easily without having to try to call somebody's parent. There's also the relay, sort of a fancier walkie talkie. It requires a service plan, but includes GPS tracking. You could give your kid an old smartphone with no service plan, but set them up with the Facebook Messenger Kids app. It's free, and as long as they have Wi-Fi, they can send a message or video chat. And some parents are even going back to flip phones. Simple, no apps, but you will have to teach your kids how to text the old fashioned way. Still, they won't always be in reach because most schools don't allow any of these devices in class, even watches. Do you have a cell phone? Yes. Yeah? Where is it right now? In my locker. Yeah. At Bear Valley International School in Denver, cell phones go in the lockers before first bell and stay there till the end of the day. Teacher Chris Plesko says in class, any device can be a distraction. Even just having a basic flip phone? can be a distraction in class because they can still send those text messages. And in fact, a lot of the kids are very good at texting without looking at that phone. Principal Lindsay Meyer says parents can still get in touch. If parents are needing to get a hold of their kiddos during the academic day, we do want them to call the office first and we will get messages to kids. If you're not convinced your child needs a device, you're not alone. Consider signing the Wait Until 8th Pledge. It's an online movement to postpone smartphones until at least 8th grade. DU psychology professor Tracy Vozar says she understands why parents feel a need to stay in touch these days. The increased level of information we have about events that are occurring across the country and across the world, there can be a desire to want to know what's happening for our children. But she warns consider all the pros and cons before giving your child any communication device. I'm really thinking about what they're capable of taking care of and being responsible with. Imagine your six or seven or eight-year-old comes home and says, I dropped the iPhone in the street and it's broken. A good reason to look at the alternatives or hold out. I mean, we all survived long before phones got smart. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. I think my parents still have one of those oh, rotary yeah? phones. Yeah, where you mess oh, up, yeah. you got to start all over again. Yep, it's, yeah. a, it's a long journey on that one. <laughs> we would love to hear from you. When do you think is the right time to get a phone for a kid? You can comment on this post on the Denver 7 Facebook page, or you can send your thoughts in an email to 360 at thedenverchannel.com. Tough, tough topic, because... Yeah. 
You want to make sure your kids yeah. are safe. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like it being able to, even they went down to the tree swing and they've called me from there and say, hey, I'm stuck in the tree and I need some help. It's <laughs> sort of right. Go on down. But it's nice so, for them to at least be able to contact yeah. us without having all access to the apps. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's media. not even the apps that concern me as much as the other kids texting back and forth. Right. Kids are that's mean to each other these mm -hmm. days sometimes. Right. So that scares me. Yeah. Social media scares me. Yeah. yeah. yeah.